yes. because you are my savior. Car tu es I mon sauveur. You, because you are my daddy. Car tu es mon papa. Je t'honneur, je te loue, je t'adore, au nom de Jésus, j'exalte ton seul nom, je te bénis Père, du fond de mon cœur, j'aimerais dire merci Papa, du fond de mon cœur, j'aimerais te dire merci, j'aimerais te dire merci Papa, tu es mon Dieu, 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 je reconnais ta présence. Let's begin to acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let's bring out the presence of our Father and say, Father, Il faut have your way in our midst this morning. Père, have, your this morning. have your way in our midst this morning. Have your way in our midst this morning. Father, have your way in our midst this morning. Let your presence come down heavily. Let your Shekinah glory come down this morning. Let your Shekinah glory come down this morning. Let your grace come down this morning. Let your favor come down this morning. Let your mercy speak for us this morning. Let your grace speak for us this morning. Let your divine presence speak for us this morning. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray for divine encounter. That in the, upon this mountain, you will see the Lord. 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 In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself, Jesus Christ. Reveal yourself, our Father. Reveal yourself. We want to see your glory in the name of Jesus. Now we are going to pray for Dr. Lumide Emmanuel. We are going to ask the Lord to speak to us through him this morning in the name of Jesus. The word of God for me for now. Let it come to me. In the name of Jesus, I will not miss my past. I will not miss my moment. In the name of Jesus, he said, A body have you prepared for me? A body have you prepared for me? Now begin to pray and say, Father, prepare Dr. Lumide for me this morning. In the name of Jesus, turn it to prayer. Turn it to prayer. Turn it to prayer. Begin to pray and say, Father, prepare Dr. Lumide for me this morning. Speak your word to me through him this morning. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, begin to pray, begin to pray. And say, Father, speak your word to me this morning through Dr. Lumide Emmanuel. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Bible says, first of all, let prayer be made, prayer, intercession, and thanksgiving. Be made for kings and for everyone. Que les prières, les so we are going to pray for the country Cameroon. And say, Father, take Cameroon. charge of this nation for your pray. glory alone. In the name of Dans Jesus, let's begin to pray. And say, Father. We submit Cameroon into your hand. We submit Cameroon into your hand. Have your way. Let your will be done. In the name of Jesus. Have your way. Let your will be done. In the name of Jesus. Have your way. Let your will be done. In the name of Jesus. Have your way. Let your will be done. In the name of Jesus. Let's begin to thank the Lord because the Lord is here and we know it. Let's begin to appreciate him and wave our hands and say, Father, we thank you. Father, we magnify your presence. We give you honor, we give you all adoration. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Thank you very much. You can have your seats. You can have your seats. So quickly, I will be having the welcoming address. Rapidement, je vais vous donner l'adresse d'accueil. Le mot d'accueil. Je vais vous accueillir officiellement. The worship team will take over before Dr. Lumide Emmanuel will take the mic after Après, that. Le mot d'accueil, uh, le corps des adorateurs vont prendre le so, relais. I'm sorry for that. I already prepared my welcoming address. So let me take it. Good morning, Bonjour. my apostles, Les apostles, my church leaders, Les my pastors, Les pasteurs, my evangelists, Les my prayer prophets, Les prophets, and my gospel ministers. I welcome you to the church.
church planting and church growth summit. So, we have a tool event every day. The morning session is church planting and church growth summit. And the evening session is the school of money summit. So the money session is actually targeted toward kingdom ministers. While the evening session is targeted toward the marketplace practitioners. And when we say marketplace, we mean the entrepreneurs, the, enter, uh, uh, the business owners, and top professionals. So this evening, please tell your members, tell your friends, tell your colleagues, let's fill this place up. And God will help us in the name of Jesus. It is an immense honor to have the community as well. And he has preached and taught on church growth strategies across the world. And I want to encourage you to be prepared for an inspired moment this morning and gain from his wealth of wisdom and experience. God will help you in Jesus' name. So some of the things you will be gaining this morning are effective church planting strategies, how to build a sustainable ministry, how to Anticipate leadership development. Comment anticiper le, le développement du leadership. How to engage your community. Comment engager votre communauté. Then how to leverage on existing technologies for ministerial growth. Et comment utiliser la technologie présente pour la croissance de l'église. The benefits of these summits are manifold. Les avantages de ce sommet sont nombreux. And it is also an opportunity for you to network with fellow believers and share your experiences and everything that you will learn with them. As we are back on this journey together, we believe that God will guide us and the Holy Spirit will baptize us with fresh wisdom. In the name of Jesus. Turn to your neighbor, left and right, and say, Welcome to Church Planting and Church Growth Summit. Greet them again. Welcome. Look to your right, look to your left. Move around and greet your neighbor. Say, Welcome to Church Growth and Church Planting. So, thank you on behalf of Dr. Olumide Emmanuel and the entire Olumide Emmanuel Ministries. I welcome you to the church party and church growth service. Thank you. I am so happy to see you this morning. This is my first time in Cameroon. But this is not the first time for the community of Jesus. But our journey together in these two days will be of tremendous benefit. Thank you. I remain your brother. For Mark. Thank you very much. The worship team. Somebody's hand beside you and tell the person on the side of the seat. And just feel free. This is a spiritual meeting. God is about to touch you and, and teach you. It's going to be awesome tonight. Can we just give the Lord a shout of praise this morning? Give the Lord a shout of praise. Get the mic. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Show your excitement. Show your excitement by giving the Lord a 
Almighty on your throne. You reign, you reign, you reign. You reign, you reign, Shen Zion's king. Kados, Kados, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you reign, you reign.
Let's thank him for his faithfulness. Let's thank him. Let's give him glory. Let's give him all the honor. Hello. Let's adore him. Let's magnify his holy name. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our worship. He is worthy of our honor. He is worthy of our adoration. There is none like him. There is none beside him. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we are grateful because you are faithful. We give you all the glory. Thank you, mighty God. Merci, mon Dieu. Have your way, Lord. Take control, Lord. Rule and reign, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Father, we thank you. Because you are God and beside you there is no other God. Thank you, awesome God. For the salvation of our souls, we thank you. For your call upon our lives, we thank you. For the privilege of election, we thank you. 
for the opportunity to sit and learn at your feet we thank you Lord we give you the glory in advance because no life will remain the same no minister will remain the same no ministry will remain the same this city will not remain the same this nation will not remain the same thank you Lord for open heavens thank you Lord for showers of blessings thank you for testimonies that will come out of this encounter to the glory of your name in Jesus mighty name we pray hallelujah let's celebrate Jesus as we take our seat you may please be seated what a mighty God we serve what an awesome God he is I want to especially thank and appreciate everyone for taking time out to be a part of this meeting I believe it's a sacrifice for you to leave your base and come spend time in a meeting like this. And I believe very strongly that your sacrifice of coming to be a part of this meeting will not go unblessed. In the name of Jesus, I want to thank uh, Corey Nofu and the entire planning team and all the ministers and the workforce and the volunteers that are sacrificed to make this meeting a reality. Many of you have sacrificed your time, some sacrificed resources, their treasures, their talents to ensure that this mission becomes a reality. It is my prayer that the God that sees in secret will reward you in the hope of in the name of Jesus. Expect harvest of pleasant surprises in the name of Jesus. In the next two mornings, this morning and tomorrow morning, we're going to be sharing around the theme church growth in the 21st century. We're going to be dealing with different dimensions and aspects of growing a mega church in the 21st century. And it is my belief that everyone that comes into this meeting will receive tools, strategies, wisdom, and an empowerment from heaven that will equip you to go forth and produce results. The way the morning session will work is that I'm going to be taking you through the church planting and church growth manual. This manual is called church growth and church planting manual. Planting a church and growing a church in the 21st century is not the same as what it used to be. So we're going to be looking at those things today, see what we can explore, and then we continue tomorrow. In this manual, there are different models. The first model talks about the fundamentals of church planting. The second model talks about winning at pioneering because not everybody can pioneer a work. Some can manage a work that somebody else has started. But to go and pioneer something of their own, they don't have what it takes. So that model deals with how you can win at pioneering. The third model is called CAMEO. C-A-M-E-O. Which is an abbreviation and an acronym for contemporary approach 
mon approche contemporaine to ministry, au ministère, evangelism, and organization. Because the way we do ministry today is different from the way we used to do ministry when we started out. By October this year, I'll be celebrating 35 years in full-time ministry. So I've been around for a while. In the late 80s and early 90s, when starting a church, when running a ministry, there are things we did then that if you try it now, you will fail. In our days, there was no air condition. There was no screen. There was no special chairs. There was even no car park. Because the richest pastor was riding motorcycles. But today, things have changed. So the message of God is the same. The mandate is the same. But the method changes. So what are the contemporary approach? That's what that model deals with. Module 4 deals with membership attraction and retention strategy. How do you attract members? And how do you retain them? If you are a ministry, you know that many people come. But they don't stay. They come. They go. And you are wondering, where are all these members? It's because there is a back door of every church. If you don't know how to lock the back door, they will come through the front door. They will go through the back door. So that module helps you to understand how to open the front door and bring in the multitude and how to manage the back door so that they will not run away so that the church can continue to grow. The next module is strategic evangelism that works. Strategic evangelism that works. Because of the evangelism you are doing right now, you are wasting time, energy, and resources because it's no more working. So what are the evangelism that works now? That is in that bodo. The next model is building systems and structures for growth. When you were born, you had skeletal system, respiratory system, digestive system. All the systems were in you from day one when you were born. So as you were growing, the structure And the next model is vital elements of growth in the 21st century. If your ministry will grow in this 21st century, what are the things that must be in place? Those were dealt with in that model. Then the next model is leading a growing church. Leading a growing church. Not every pastor can lead a growing church. Some pastors can only lead a small church. Because to lead a growing church, you can't be insecure. To lead a growing church, you can't be threatened. You gave somebody five minutes to lead prayer. And in five minutes of leading prayer, the whole place was shaken. And people were excited in the Lord. Then like Saul, he said, David must die. This guy is about to take my shine. 
you will remain small. <laughs> because that means you are not ready for growth. So that deals with you as a leader. Because if you don't grow, your church will not grow. You have to know better to do better. You have to have the capacity to pastor Judas. They are betraying you. They are speaking against you. They are gossiping about you. And they will still come and call you Papa. And need that for you to lay hands on them. And you are asking yourself, should I bless or should I curse? But you have a shepherd's heart. You have to be able to pastor Thomas. Everything you preach, they disobey. They doubt you. Yet you must believe in them. You have to be ready to pastor Peter. They question everything you do. They don't agree. You have to convince them and convince them. But you must still love them. Are you ready? Then we look at the next module there. Is 10 power points for growing a mega church. 10 power points for growing a mega church. Itemize in that portion. Then the final module is breaking growth barriers. Breaking growth barriers. There are many barriers to growth. So in that module, how do you break the 50 growth barrier? When you start a church, when you start a church, you begin to go, 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 go. Then when you get to 50 people, it's as if the thing is not growing again. And you begin to wonder what's happening. What God told me is bigger than this. Yeah, what God told you is bigger than that. But the wisdom you need is now new. To cross 50 people. Then, how to break the 200 growth barrier. When you cross 50, the next barrier is 200. You just see that 200 people every week, 200, 200, 200. One Sunday you come, there will be 230. The next Sunday they are 165. And you are wondering what's happening here. There are wisdom you need to have to break the 200 barrier. The next one is 500. To break the 500 barrier, you must become another man. <laughs> you must become another kind of pastor. The next one is the 1,000 barrier. Then the 3,000. Then the 5,000. Once you can cross 5,000, there is no realm you cannot get to. So all these are itemized in this manual. So you already know that even if we spend the whole day together, we cannot finish. So go and get the manual. I will do what I can do today. I will continue tomorrow. Wherever I stop, I stop. But the manual is out there. Everybody here, if you are really serious about ministry, get a copy so that you can continue to study. The ones we can't touch, you can touch. If you don't have the money, go to your church. Carry your church money. Buy. Collect receipts in the name of the church. It is now going to be in the church library. It will now be available for you to read. So don't tell me I don't have money. Carry church offering and buy material to develop yourself as the CEO of the church. So, tomorrow, we are also going to be giving certificates to those that are interested. Certificates of participation. Many of you sitting down here right now, I don't need to be a prophet to know that many of you did not go to Bible school. I don't need to be a prophet to know that many of you don't even have ordination certificates. Some of you were ordained in IVG. Some of you were ordained in midweek service. 
some of you, your pastor just say hey, you are now a pastor. No certificate. No training. So you need to be endorsed. You need certification to show that you are training yourself and you are developing yourself. Because all the training you go to, they, call, they accumulate to points in your educational journey. So if you are interested in getting a certificate of participation tomorrow, you go and register today and then you pay so that we can carve your name on it. And then tomorrow, I will present the certificate to you. I will take pictures as you are collecting certificates. So that you can frame it in your office. That I went for a course. And this is when I was given certificate. So this church planting manual is uh, how much? 10,000. It's 10,000. The certificate is 10,000. But if you collect the two, pay 15,000. So 10,000, 10,000 is 20,000. But if you pay for the certificate and the manual, you just pay 15,000. So it will be discount. There are many other books that we brought. The Pathway to Wealth. How to Create Wealth as a Career Person. And the School of Money. Those are materials that you need. As a pastor, I will advise that you buy everything you can buy so that you can have it in your library as a reference material. This is Wisdom for Couples Pack. It has 10 books for married people and 10 audio programs for married people. These are materials you can use for training in your church to train your couples or to run your couples ministry. This is Wisdom for Singles Pack. It has 10 books for singles and 10 audios for singles. Then this is the World Creation Master Pack. Everything I have written on World Creation. These three books here and four other books they are there along with all the audio on World Creation. So if you buy this one you have everything everything I have produced on World Creation. And then if you want to go into real estate, we have the real estate master pack. All these materials are available out there. If there is anything I will advise you to do, don't miss tonight. This morning is for pastors, but evening is school of money. Bring your wife, bring your husband, bring your children, bring your members, bring as many people as you can bring. Because if their lives are better, your job will be easier. I'm not here to start a church. I have enough headache with the branches I already have. I don't need Cameroon trouble. <laughs> so don't be afraid. Come. Bring your people. We are here on mission to see what we can do to help you so that where we have made mistakes, you will not make mistakes. May the Lord bless you. So let's start. This morning, uh, I'm going to share with us for about two hours. They will go on a 15 minutes break so that you can go and get the book and pay for your certificate. And then we'll return for 45 minutes where we have question and answers. So if you have any question as a result of what I'm going to share or as a result of anything that has bothered you in life and ministry by the grace of God, the Spirit of God is here to give us an answer of peace. So I want to deal with fundamentals of church planting. I want to focus on this today because many of us 
sincere. Very sincere. Très sincère. But sincerely wrong. Mais sincère, because we are building on the wrong foundation. Parce que nous bâtissons sur le mauvais fondement. And we are moving in the wrong direction. Et nous conduisons dans la mauvaise direction. So this module, ce module, fundamentals of church planting, is to take us back to re-examine our foundation. Et de nous ramener à examiner nos And check ourselves. Et nous examiner. To be sure we are on the right footing. Pour rassurer que nous sommes sur le bon chemin. Then. We can begin to talk about growing. Fundamentals of church planting. Now, in starting a new church, there are a lot of things that you need to put in place. Many people are afraid to start a new church. Many people are afraid to go and start a work for many reasons. But one of the things you need to understand is that if you are going to start a new work, there are two things that must never be compromised. Number one, you must have a genuine call into ministry. You must have a genuine call into ministry. There are many people that God did not call. They call God. There are many people that God did not call. Their pastor called them. There are many people that God did not call. Their wife called them in the bedroom. When are we going to start our own? You are anointed my husband. When am I going to be a first lady? Are we going to serve these people forever? So they got a call in the bedroom through the voice of their wife. And it was a missed call. So number one, you must have a genuine call into ministry. Number two, you must have a divine leading to go and start a church. You must have a divine leading to go and start a church. There is a difference between ministry and church. You may be called into a ministry. It doesn't mean God is calling you to go and start a church. The pastoral ministry is the most popular and the most prominent aspect of ministry, especially in Africa. So when people receive a call like this, they don't even want to ask God how they just go and start a church. So there are evangelists today pastoring churches. They have left the evangelical field. They are pastoring churches. There are teachers today that God has raised to go as itinerant ministers. They started church. There are people that God has called to start a parachurch ministry. Music ministry. Drama ministry. Training ministry. Intercessory ministry. Publishing ministry. They went to start church. Because they thought that they have to have a church. Because they have not been well taught. It's one thing to be called. It's another thing to be sent. The Bible says, and he called the disciples unto himself. So that he can send them to go and work for him. Sir, please come. I have called him. Let's continue preaching. So, you must have a genuine call into the ministry. Number two, you must have a divine leading to plant a church. So, let's have I called him? Have I sent him? So, why did I call him? He doesn't know. What is he supposed to do? Wait until I tell him why. But because I'm continuing to talk, he's getting agitated. Why is this God wasting my time? What next, Lord? There is fire in my bone. I am better than that pastor. I am better than that one. I should be out there now. Wait until you are sent. He said, Tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. If you go without being sent, 
you will be spent. So there are many people that God has called, but he has not sent them. And they have sent themselves. And if you send yourself, you will sponsor yourself. God bless you. Hello. So once you are sure that you are called, and you are sure he has sent you to plant a church, then you can now begin to talk about church planting. What is church planting? I'm going to give you a definition and then we'll explain the definition. Church planting is simply the heart. A-R-T. The heart of winning souls. A-R-T. Art. Like an artist. It's simply the heart of winning souls following them up faire le suivi, gathering them les discipling them les to become a family à une an empowered ambassador Et au des church planting is simply the heart of winning souls des following them up faire leur suivi, Gathering them les and discipling them les to become à a family, an empowered ambassador. Les, les you need to get this manual because it will really help you. Anybody that is serious will get this manual. Toute avoir now, let, let's see this. When you say art, art, let me explain to you the way it works. You see, an artist, un artist will start with what is called a plain canvas. Va chose de vide. Like a plain sheet. Comme un blanc. It's white. Tout blanc. Nothing is there. Rien y est écrit. But the artist is seeing what you are not seeing. Mais ce so vous inside voyez. the artist, à de he can see what he wants to draw. Il peut voir ce veut And then he begins to work on it. Et il à y And when he's finished, Et quand terminé, you are like, wow. Genre, wow. So church planting Alors, is an heart. Un art. It starts inside you. Ça à God speaks to you. Dieu vous parle. He shows you a picture. Il vous une he gives you the plan. Il vous donne les But physically, there is nothing on ground. You now have to move by faith to begin to present step by step what you see in your spirit. It may not look like it, but after a while, the picture will be clear. That means you must have faith in what you have heard. You must have faith in what you have been told. Even if the external condition does not look like what you saw, you keep pushing because you are seeing what people cannot see. So in that definition, there are some things that you now notice which are now your responsibility. So number one, so winning. So if you want to plant a church, it's an heart. In order for that picture to become a reality, these are now things you have to now begin to do. So you now sit down. I'm going to start this church now. Because God has called me. How will I win souls into the church? So you document how you are going to win the souls. You strategize how you are going to win the souls so that you can implement. When I win the soul, how am I going to follow them up? You sit down again. You document. When souls are won, we are going to follow them up by making phone calls, sending a letter, visiting them. You sit down. You document all these things. That is why being a pastor is hard work. It's not for lazy people. It's not for jobless people. You don't start a church because you didn't get a job. You don't start a church because you failed the exam. Because the job you didn't get, the exam you failed, are nothing compared to what you will face when you start a church, when God didn't call you. Even those that God called are struggling to make it work. 
How much more you that call yourself? You will sponsor yourself. You will fight your battle by yourself. So you strategize on soul winning. You strategize on follow up. You now strategize how do I gather them? Where am I going to put the people? So you are talking of venue. That means you must have a conducive environment. A comfortable environment. Where the people will gather. These are your job. Angels will not get a venue for you. You have to go and get the venue. Then discipling them. So you now have to have a discipleship plan. A discipleship plan. These people I'm going to win. These people that I'm going to follow up. These people that I'm going to gather. How will I disciple them? So that they can become men of God. Become women of God. That is your job. To now begin to look for discipleship programs. And develop discipleship curriculum. Then, to make them into a family. You have to now sit down. And understand the psychology. Of building strangers. Into a team. Building strangers. To become a family. That's what you need to now know. So when you come to church, you realize that people come to church as strangers. But over a period of time, they become a close-knit family. That is part of your job. That is part of church planting. Then, you now raise them to become ambassadors that you will now send out. So until your church is able to raise disciples that will go into the world as ambassadors, you have not completed your job. Gathering crowd is not the will of God. If the crowd is not following the cloud of glory, anybody can gather crowd. Footballers gather crowd in the stadium. Musicians gather crowd in concerts. Markets gather crowd in the marketplace. Politicians gather crowd in campaign rally. So that you gather crowd means nothing. If the crowd is not following the cloud of glory, and if the crowd is not becoming disciples, that God can send as salt and as light into their world. So this is church planting. Few things you need to note. You don't need to break somebody's ministry to start your own. Can you imagine that you want to build a house now? You now go to your neighbor's house and start breaking the block so that you can get block to go and build your own. Number one, you have destroyed your neighbor's house. Number two, the block will still not be useful for you. So you lose on both sides. So many times when you break away and carry people's member because they are not your member, they are the one that will mess up your work. And before you know it, you will regret carrying people. So you need to know that when it comes to starting a church, there are many people out there that are looking for church. Instead of transfer members, look for fresh souls. People that have never received Jesus. People that have never been to church. They are easier to pastor. Because what you tell them is what they know. Right, you, tell you carry all these Methuselahs that have gone to 13 churches and you are number 14. They will trouble your life. When I was in Talita Assembly, women used to cover their hair. Why don't we cover hair here? Excuse me, sir. I have a question. 
Why are we not doing vigil? When I was in Joseph International Ministry of Deliverance Apostolic, vigil was every Friday. Before you know it, they will confuse your work with all the virus of all the different churches they have gone to. But when you have a fresh soul, precept upon precept, line upon line, you are teaching them and they are growing. A lot of all these Methuselah members, you are, they are going to waste your time and they will be the one polluting other people. So make sure that you focus on building according to God's pattern. Let me share with you 10 foundational tips. 10 foundational tips that will help you in this journey of planting a church that will grow in the 21st century. In Luke chapter 14 and verse number 28, the Bible says, which of you intending to build a tower will not first of all sit down and count the cost whether he has what it takes to start. So listen, number one, count the cost. Are you really ready to start a church? Pioneering is not easy. Starting a church is not being so. Not many people like to be a part of something small. People want to be a part of something big. When you are starting, it was going to be tough. When a canoe is on the sand, you need energy to push it into the water. When it's inside the water, you can row easily. Pioneering is pushing the canoe on the sand into the water. If you have driven a car before, you know that it's very easy to drive a car. But when your car breaks down and you have to push the car, then you will know that car is heavy. <laughs> So starting a walk, count the cost. If you have been traveling before, once you start a new job, you can't travel again. If you have been spending money anyhow, enjoying your life because God has blessed you, the day you start a church, all your money is going to that work. And people will still say you are stealing money. Even though they have not brought any money. So you are going to be facing trouble on both sides. All your family money is inside. The people are not giving. Yeah, they are saying you are stealing. So you are asking yourself, which money did you bring that I stole? Can the cost. Listen and listen well. I beg you, man, Man, um, man, um, if God is calling you, si Dieu vous appelle, call your wife, votre sit her down, la call your children, vos sit them down, explain to them, let everybody be in support, because soutien. marriage can ruin, uh, ministry can ruin your marriage. Parce oh. le peut votre because when you start a job, Quand vous une école, and your wife and children does not understand, votre et vos ne they can become your number one enemy. Ils because you will be in church from morning to night. You will be picking cold phone call in the middle of the night. Pastor, pray. Pastor, I need to see you. And your wife is wondering, when are we going to have time in this marriage? What is all these people that you are running around for? So your wife must be on board. Your children must be on board. If God has called you, tell him to talk to your wife. If your wife does not accept the call, suspend the call until God convince your wife. Or else, you will start the work. Your marriage will scatter. The work will still scatter. I'm telling you, a man starts a church 
The wife said, I don't agree. Je suis pas he said, you are not my God. Je pas mon Dieu. God has called me. Dieu appelé. Whether you like it or not, je veux pas. I am going to start. Je vais Then the wife Et l'épouse. We now come to church on Sunday. Ne vient pas l'église dimanche. The day she chose to come. Le jour elle choisit venir. She will come dressed elle like a prostitute. Habillée comme une prostituée. And she will come late. Et elle vient en retard. And go and sit in front seat. Et elle va s'asseoir devant. The one day. Un jour. She brought out cigarettes. Elle sort la cigarette. On Sunday morning. Dimanche matin. Inside church. À l'intérieur de l'église. And people were like, is this not his wife? Et les gens vont dire, ce n'est pas son épouse. If he cannot control his wife. S'il ne peut pas contrôler son épouse. What ministry are we talking about here? De quel ministère parlons-nous? At the end of the day. Et à la fin du jour. The ministry still did not work. Le ministère ne marche pas. Men. Oh. Men. Oh. Men. Oh. Read your Bible. Lisez votre Bible. I have read Bible. J'ai lu la Bible. From Genesis to Revelation. De Genèse à Apocalypse. And I stand to be corrected. Et j'ai commencé. I've never seen a place. Je n'ai jamais vu un endroit. Where a man led a woman astray. Où un homme me conduit une femme. It's always women. C'est toujours les femmes. Leading men astray. <laughs> Qui me conduit les hommes. God created the world. Dieu a créé le monde. He rested. Il s'est reposé. He created man. Il a créé l'homme. He rested. Il s'est reposé. The day he created the woman. Le jour il a créé la femme. Both God. Et à la fois Dieu. A man <laughs> has not rested. Ne se sont pas. Men. Oh. Stop eating the apple. Arrêtez de manger la pomme. They are still serving you apple now. On vous sert toujours les pommes aujourd'hui. You are still eating apple. Et vous mangez toujours la pomme. Listening and listening well. Écoutez bien. One day. Un jour. Sarah came to Abraham. Sarah est venue à Abraham. Honey. Chérie. You know we don't have a child. Why not sleep with Hagar? You know she's my house elf. She can be our surrogate. So that through her, God will give us a child. Abraham obeyed. He chopped apple. Il a mangé la peau. Without asking God. Sans demander à God, Dieu. God, see what my wife is saying. Regarde ce que mon Should I pursue? Dois-je poursuivre? Because it was good for his flesh. Parce que c'était bon pour sa chair. He entered the website. Il est entré dans le site. All of a sudden. Tout à coup. The woman became pregnant. La femme est tombée enceinte. All of a sudden. Tout à coup. Ishmael was born. Ishmael est né. One day. Un jour. The same Sarah. La même Sarah. Was watching. Et observait. And she saw Ishmael. Et elle vit Mocking Isaac. Isaac, my Isaac, Mon Isaac. this useless concubine, concubine Abraham. Abraham, that woman must leave this house, cette she and her child Elle est son must go, Abraham says she's not going, Say you must go. Elle doit Abraham now went to God. Abraham est allé à Dieu. God, see my wife. Oh. Dieu regarde ma femme. Oh. Ah, so you know God. Non, tu connais Dieu. Why didn't you go to God the first time? Tu pas à Dieu. When it was tu pleasing to you. Quand c'était, quand now c'était that is not pleasing to you. Maintenant que ce ne sont pas tes you now went to God. Tu vas vers Dieu. God said, Mr. Abraham. Dieu Abraham. The first time your wife spoke to you. La première fois que ton épouse a parlé. You obey. Tu as obéi. This time around, Maintenant, you will obey again. <laughs> Abraham, listen Écoute to the voice à la voix of your wife. De ton épouse. Hello. Hi. Why am I saying this? Est-ce que je dis ceci? You need your wife. Vous avez de votre Many épouse. men have failed because they don't have a wife supporting them. Parce qu'ils pas une your wife is your number one member. Votre femme, c'est votre your number one supporter. Un. Votre supporter. Your number one intercessor. Votre Everybody can change church. Tout le monde peut changer Don't just say, oh, Pastor, my family and I are relocating. Pastor, mon, ma famille et moi nous changeons. God has done it. Dieu l'a fait. Your prayer has been answered. Ont été exaucées. And they leave you. Et te quitte. It's only your wife and children that are the C'est members you have. Votre épouse they are the ones that will cry with you. C'est eux qui vont pleurer pray with you. Prier avec vous. Fast with you. Jeûner avec vous. Be with you. So if you don't get your wife on board, Alors, si votre femme many pas men bon, in Africa don't listen to their wives. Plusieurs hommes en Afrique n'écoutent pas leur épouse. Oh, an African man. Oh, je suis un homme africain. Never women. Les women is your turn now. Women. Les femmes. Don't marry African men. Ne pousse pas les hommes africains. African men. Les hommes africains. They are not romantic. Ils ne sont pas romantiques. They are not caring. Ils ne font pas soin. They are not listening. Ils n'écoutent pas. They don't know. Ils pas. They don't know that they don't know. Ils pas qu'ils pas. And they don't want to know. Et ils veulent même pas savoir. And then you have to make them think that they know. Et ensuite, tu dois so that you will not bruise their ego. ego. Marry a kingdom man. Un homme du Marry a kingdom man. Un homme du so you need the buying of your wife. 
so that you can have a support so that you can have an intercessor so that you can have someone standing with you so count the cost what did I say I want to speak at the church at their 28th year anniversary in the UK 28th year anniversary in the UK the guy, the protocol guy that came to pick me was someone I did not know. So we got to the church. It was a nice meeting. They shared testimonies of some things. On my way back, having listened to me, the same man now said, Sir, can I ask you a question? I said, What's the question? He said, what do you do when your wife leads you into trouble and leaves you in the trouble? I said, explain more. <laughs> and he told me something that validates what I'm saying here. He said, sir, I am the assistant pastor in this church. We started this church together. He said, but three years ago, when they were celebrating 25 years anniversary of this church, the church bought a brand new car for the pastor because of 25 years. On our way home, my wife said, how come they bought car? for the senior pastor and they didn't buy anything for you. Is it not two of you that have been there for 25 years? He said, I told my wife, I am not the pastor. I am the assistant pastor. Even this car they bought for pastor, I am one of those that is in the committee that we should do something, we should do something. We too gave. It's not even church money. It's money from different people, both from the church, from outside the church. He said, then my wife said, you, have, you won't listen to me when I'm talking. When the pastor celebrated 50th, they bought him a car. 50th birthday. When the pastor celebrated 50th birthday, they bought a car for him. When the pastor's wife celebrated 50th birthday, they bought a car for her. When you celebrated 50th, they gave you a gift card to go and buy shirt and tie. Honey, honey, these people are using us. Let's go and start our own. Is this the way we are going to continue? He says, sir, for almost a year, my wife began to torment me. The house was hot. And I told her, honey, starting a church is not easy. He said, we must start. I want to be a first lady. So I went to my senior pastor, told him what I was going through, and he said, my son, marriage is more important than ministry. What your wife is asking for is wrong. Pray for God to convince her. Try to get her to see that it's wrong. But if you have to go, I will release you with joy. But just know that you are my son forever and this is your house. So he says, sir, two years ago, we were released to go and start the church. The pastor came and commissioned us. He said, on the day of commissioning, we had about 100 people with visitors and everybody that came. So then the next Sunday, we had 11 people. Out of that 11 people, me, my wife, and three children are five. He said, so that morning, I woke my wife up. I said, honey, let's go to church. And she told me, he said, why are we going early? This is nine o'clock. Service starts by 11. I said, honey, we are now the pastors. We are the ones to open the door. Arrange the chair. Set up the envelope. Put up, he said, ah. But we're not doing that in the church before now. 
He said, at that point, we are assistants. There were people. He said, now we are the owner of the church. We have to build our own church. Ah, me, I'm tired, though. You can go. I will join you later. He said, sir, since we started the church, it's been one trouble after the other. He said, five months later, my wife said, so where are we going for summer? As they saw, ma, we can't go anywhere. We apply, we have started a church. We have 11 members. We have to pastor the people. Me, I have to go on holiday. I can, I'm going to stress myself. But we used to go on summer twice a year. He said that was when we were an assistant. <laughs> now we are the pastors. <laughs> we can't go anywhere. <laughs> How do you travel for one month? <laughs> Who are you going to leave the people for? <laughs> no pastor, no assistant, nobody. <laughs> so my wife said, you're on your own. <laughs> so, so, sir, <laughs> after two years, <laughs> I said, baby, me, I'm returning back. <laughs> they didn't drive me away. <laughs> I'm going back. Excuse me. Excuse me. I can't go back there. It's going to be a shame. <laughs> I can't go back. So, so as I'm talking to you right now, I'm back here. My wife does not come. My marriage is scattering. The same woman that pushed me into the church is the same woman that has now become my enemy. So I told him, Welcome to the club. <laughs> of men who disobey God and obey their wife. Wherever there is a Jezebel, there will be an Ahab. Jezebel cannot function if there is no Ahab. So you need to understand. Don't be what? Can't cause. Number two. Don't be desperate. Ne sois pas Don't be desperate. Ne sois pas Church planting needs money. Oh. Les de a but don't allow money and desperation ne pas et au to make you to compromise your principles. Que tu tes or you will regret it later. Sinon, tu vas plus tard. A church that is just starting Une qui vient de cannot pay your bills now. Ne peut pas payer tes you now say you are a full time minister. Full time pastor? That's full time foolishness. You don't go into full time until your hands are full. How can you have 20 members? You say you are a full time pastor. Okay. You are jobless and lazy. So, offering of 20 people, you want to use it to take care of yourself? Your wife and the six battalion children that you gave birth to. Eight of you on 20 people offering. You still want them to pay your rent. And then you are still talking. When are you people going to buy me a car? 20 members. Who did this to you? Hello? Don't be desperate. Out of desperation. A lot of pastors have made mistakes, compromised their faith, gone into occultism, gone to borrow money, begging church members, going to unbelievers for money just because they are desperate. You want to blow. You that just started church when year, you have 20 members. 15 of them are your protocol officer. 15 of them are your security men. Excuse me. Who is trying to kill you? What have you achieved? That somebody wants to kill you. If they kill you now, what glory does the devil have? You are not even doing anything meaningful. So what is all this unnecessary stress? You have just 52 members. You are already a bishop. Apostle general. You are looking for Taitu. Without entitlement. Fig leaves. 
to cover the glory that is gone, Ichabod. Man of God, don't be desperate. Grow the work. Pay the price. Build the work. With time, the work will speak for you. The work will speak for you. Number three. Numéro Two or three people are enough. Deux ou trois personnes sont assis. You want to start a church? Vous voulez commencer une église? Two or three people are enough. Deux ou trois personnes sont assis. Many times. La plupart de temps. We don't start. Nous ne commençons pas. Because we are looking for crowd. Parce que nous cherchons la foule. You are married. Vous êtes marié. You have two children. Vous avez deux enfants. That's already four people. C'est déjà quatre personnes. Church has started. L'église a commencé. But wait, you are waiting for crowd. Mais vous attendez la foule. No, 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 no. Non, 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 non. Two non. or three people. Deux ou trois personnes. Are enough to start. Sont assis pour In commencer. Matthew 18. Dans Matthieu 18. Verse 19 and 20. 19 et 20. God gave us a revelation. Dieu nous a donné une révélation. He says, if two or three. Et si deux ou trois. Shall gather together. Sont rassemblés ensemble. In my name. En That's the key. Nom. In my name, I will be there with them. Once you have the presence of God, you can command the presence of men. When you carry the cloud of glory, the cloud will come for the cloud. So all you need is two or three people gathering together in the name of the Lord. And by the presence of God, men will begin to come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. So two or three people are enough. As long as you can pray, you can evangelize, you can follow up, you can gather, you can disciple, that's all you need. Because if you have the crowd without the cloud, they will scatter. If people are present without the presence of God, they will scatter. Number four, don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. Proverbs 28, 22. The Bible says, He that is said to be rich, as an evil eye, and consider it not, that poverty shall come upon him. The New Living Translation says, Greedy people try to get rich quick, but they don't realize that they are headed for poverty. So don't be in a hurry. A tree does not grow overnight. Pregnancy does not produce before nine months. Babies don't become an adult in one day. Avoid compromises. Avoid mistakes. Avoid hastiness. Don't be in a hurry. Be that believer does not make haste. It don't make case. Many years ago, I was told that a young boy, wants, an apostle, wanted to see me. I said, no problem, let him come. We booked an appointment for him to come. I have known about him in the area. I've seen some adverts he has done. And I swear, okay, as a man that God has raised in that territory, let me help him. There are things I know about him that he does not know that I know. So this young boy, because when they talk, say, is that an apostle? They say, yes. I say, is he not that boy? He say, ah, he's an apostle now. Okay, let him come. When he came into my office, he came with four people. So he said, hello, sir. I said, hello, apostle. How are you doing, man of God? <laughs> so he came in. So he came. I said, so who are all these? We said, they are my protocol. Said, so, all of you are seeing me or you are seeing me. Which one? He said, no, I came to see you. I said, okay. I said, hello, protocol, please. Can you stay outside? So, so because I'm not thinking, who wants to kill him in my office? <laughs> that he came with protocol. So in my mind, I'm like, hey. All these boys. <laughs> this, this ministry thing has changed. <laughs> so he sat down. He said, 
So I just came to see man of God. You know, you're a father in the territory. Just wanted to come and see you, just to reconnect with you. Just to, you know, so that you will know that we are here. Because God has been doing amazing things. You know, we started not too long ago. And right now we are doing three services. I thought he came to see me. He's supposed to be asking questions or telling me but he's giving me story. So I kept quiet. Mm, hallelujah. <laughs> Wonderful. Glory, yeah, glory to God. Bien, bien. Wow. À Dieu. wow. He talk and talk and talk. Il a parlé, parlé, parlé. So when he finished, I was waiting for a question, no question. Quand il a fini, à la question, question. God bless you, man of God. Dieu béni, homme de Dieu. It was good to see you. Bon de voir Can we pray? Ah. So I prayed for him. Prié pour lui. And he left. Et il est parti. So when he left, Quand il est parti. I called my administrator. I said, do you see what just happened now? He said, what happened? Ah. I said, this guy, he said, ah. he said, no. There is 12 of them that came home. <laughs> that the other ones are outside. <laughs> that they line up like this, like a, so. <laughs> I said, eh? So I laughed. I said, Kai. I said, the arrogance of this boy, the shallowness and lack of understanding. They now told me something that shocked me. They said, out of the 12, six are women. Six are men. That's what we told the women and the two guys to stay so that only those four will follow him inside. I said, but the guy is not married now. And you are carrying women around. I said, we really need to pray for this guy. You see, what he did not know is that the venue where he's using for his church, the landlord is my church member. And it is a flat. Flat. His church is inside the sitting room. Son église est dans le salon. 40 chairs. 40 chairs. So that three service. C'est trois cultes. Even if they are full. Même si c'est plein. 40 plus. times 3. C'est 40 fois 3. My choir. Ma chorale. Is 300 people. C'est 300 personnes. Only my choir. Seulement ma chorale. <laughs> And a boy. Et le gars. 40 members times 3. 40 members times 3. 3 cultes. He's carrying 12 people to come Il and see. Il marche avec 12 protocoles. I say, hey. J'ai dit, aïe. As I'm speaking to you right now, the ministry is no more. The guy is nowhere to be found. Because you don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. Many of you are too proud and too arrogant. Because they are calling you Papa and Mama. Bro, you are just 34 years old. You are young. Don't let you are just 34 years old. They are calling you Papa. Mama. And you too, you are carrying yourself like that. Kuda. Kuda. You see how many more long years to go. Don't grow old and become aged before your time. Number five. Pray for and recruit pillars. Pray for and recruit pillars. If you want to plant a church si that will do well, you need pillars. You need strong men, strong women that will support you. So what do you do? You pray for God to bring them and then you go out and recruit them. Matthew chapter 9 verse 38. Matthew chapter 9 verse 38. He said, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into the vineyard. So what do you do? You begin to pray. When you want to start a church, months before the church starts, years before the church starts, minimum of six months before, ideally two years before you start a church, you must start a weekly fasting and prayer for that work. Laying the foundation of prayer. 
begin to push in the spirit. Somebody is in final year in the university that will graduate next year and God needs them in your work. As you begin to pray, God begins to touch their hearts, organize things. They will get a job, move to your city and get a house around your location. Your members are coming. Somebody is about to get married. God will organize for somebody that lives in your area to get engaged to them. They will relocate to come and meet their husband. They will get married. They will become pregnant. Show up in your church as a couple. Give birth to twins in your church. Additional members. As you begin to pray, God begins to move things. Somebody that knows how to play the keyboard is going to be sent on youth cop as a youth copper to come to your city and to serve, to serve. And then they will come and live with their uncle in your, in your area. They will join your church and begin to play the keyboard without asking for money. Like many of the higher link we have in church today. Keyboard is one to collect. Drum I want to collect. Saxophone he wants to collect. And you are asking yourself. I thought you came to serve God. Or you came to look for a job. Are you a son? Or an hireling? So listen to me. You begin to pray. Number two. You recruit pillars. You don't just pray for pillars. You recruit them. Mark chapter 1. 19 and 20. Jesus recruited James and John. The sons of Zebedee. He said, follow me. Follow me. So you must go to some people and talk to them. God is calling me to start a work. I would like you to prayerfully consider if you'd like to be, if you'd like to be a part of it. When you do that, this group of people will now become part of what we call the mighty men of your work. Number six. Lay a foundation of prayer. Lay a foundation of prayer. Luke 18 verse 1. The Bible says, and he spoke a parable unto them to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Listen and listen well. Starting a church will pitch you against the gates of hell. There are forces of darkness that will not fight you when you are a member. Forces of darkness that will not fight you when you are an assistant pastor. Forces of darkness that will not fight you when you are an unserious Christian because they have already captured you. But if you start a church, Ah, you will see, <laughs> you will see Pepe. <laughs> Hell will show up. Why? You want to set people free? People that the devil has bound? You want to give people direction? People that the devil has captured? And you expect the devil to just leave you like that? He will come after you. If he does not get you, he will come out of your wife. If he does not get your wife, come out of your children. Don't get your family, they come after your health. They come after your finances. They come after your marriage. Listen and listen well. If God did not call you, don't go the gate of hell. So you need to lay a foundation of prayer. Your prayer must be specific. Your prayer must be strategic. Your prayer must be consistent. Repeat after me, specific, strategic, and consistent. So you need to continue to pray. There are about 47 different aspects of a church. So you list out all these aspects. 
tous ces aspects. That's why you get the manual. I can't list them. Go to the manual. And then you begin to pray in advance. Et vous commencez à prier par anticipation. You pray for the finance of the church. Vous priez pour les finances de l'église. You pray for the altar of the church. Vous priez pour l'autel de l'église. You pray for the members of the church. Vous priez pour les membres de l'église. You pray for the leaders of the church. Vous priez pour les leaders de l'église. You pray for the location of the church. Vous priez pour la location. You pray for the program of the church. Vous priez pour les programmes de l'église. You pray for the enemies of the church. Vous priez pour les ennemis. So you are praying. You are praying. You are praying. You are praying. Listen to me, people of God. Fasting and prayer is non-negotiable for a pastor. At least that you are so lazy. Once a week, you must fast and pray. Ideally, twice a week, we help you better. Fasting and prayer as a pastor. Please, I beg you, if you are not ready to pay the price, don't bother. Number seven, you must be a motivational leader. You must be a motivational leader. Many of you have not been able to see your church grow because you are depressing your people every week. Every time they gather, you are bleeding on them. All your trouble is what you are pushing on them. I was listening to my mentor years ago. As a young minister. Ah, I'm so grateful to God. That they did not edit that part. Of the message. Few years later. When I went to his church in London, I went to buy that particular tape. And I listened to the tape. And that part has been edited. So I went to and I said, Sir, why did you edit this part? He said, Ah, that, that part should not have been there. I was angry with them when they, edited, when they put it on air. I said, But that part that you edited was the part that delivered me. I said, God made them to do that, sir. And what had happened was, he was preaching. And he was preaching. And he began to talk to the people. Many of you are not serious. We will organize program. You will not come. We will do this. You will not come. He was on and on. The all of a sudden, he just stopped. He said, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be doing this. He said, because I'm angry about those that are not here. But instead of blessing those of you that are here, I am complaining to you about people that are not here. He said, I'm sorry. And then he continued this message. That was the part that blessed me. Because I used to do the same thing. You were not serious. From that day, those who show up, I bless them. Those who don't show up, I don't care. So when I show up anywhere, even if it's six people, I pour my life. I pour my destiny. Because I know that one woman at the well can bring a whole village. So listen, be a motivational leader. When you show up on Sunday morning, people have been messed up through the week. They have been shattered by life. They are not coming to church for you to judge them again. They need hope. They need encouragement. So be a motivational leader. Encourage them. The Bible says, 4 Samuel chapter 30, and verse number 6, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. So as a pastor, you must be bleeding, yet blessing. Don't allow what you are going through to hinder you from leading your people to their breakthrough. When you show up, bless them. Carry the word of God. Prophesy over their life. Job chapter 8 and verse number 7. Say your beginning may be small, but your latter hand will greatly increase. So when you show up, begin to give them hope from that scripture. Your future is bright. You will get there. You will make it. 
I prophesy. Your future is bright. Hope begins to rise. Hope begins to rise. If you are not married, I'm happy to announce to you that your spouse is on the way. If you don't have a child, I'm happy to announce to you that the covenant of fruitfulness is at work in your life. If you are poor today, that's not the end of the story. You will arise and you will shine. Hope begins to rise. Faith begins to rise. They begin to say amen. Angels begin to go to work. Destiny begins to locate them. Testimony begins to come. Church begins to grow. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And verse number 9. Number 8. Better is the end of a thing thereof. Than the beginning. So you begin to tell them. You will finish well. Your latter days shall be better. These are scriptures. That gives you prophecy. To pronounce upon your people. Zechariah. Chapter 4. And verse number 10. The hand of Zerubbabel. That laid the foundation. Shall complete it. So you begin to prophesy. And begin to tell them. You will finish well. You will finish well. You will finish well. You will finish well. You begin to prophesy what your hands have started. Your life will complete. You begin to prophesy. As you begin to do that, hope will begin to rise. Things will begin to happen. So listen to me, man of God. Listen to me, woman of God. You must be shameless. And persistent in your trust in God. So when you stand upon the altar, you are not representing yourself. You are representing God. I was in a pastor's meeting with some of my pastors. And one of them said they needed money to do some things in their branch. And I told him, go and raise the offering. Challenge the people to sow. Uh, you know, Pastor, the economy. So I asked him a question. I said, the money you are asking them to give, is it for your pocket? Is it so that you can steal the money? He said, no, sir. I said, so fake people are bold. Fake people are bold. Genuine people are fearful. I said, the fact that you don't have money does not mean the people don't have money. You are allowing your personal poverty to hinder you from being bold to ask people for offering. I said, when Moses went to God, God spoke to him. Go tell the people to bring me an offering. And God listed the kind of offering they should bring. Gold, purple, everything. So I said, go. Because every time there is a need in the house, God has put the supply in the pocket of somebody. They are waiting to hear your voice as a confirmation that the supply in their pocket is for that project. So he went and obeyed. He called me one week later. He said, sir, I'm sorry. He said, I'm sorry, sir. I'm, I'm ashamed of myself. You don't know what you did to me, sir. I said, what happened? He said, I did not want to do it because I know the problem of the people. So, but I was, I was about to wrap up preaching. I just heard your voice. Go raise an offering. So, I said, well, before we wrap up right now, there is a project we are trying to do and we need this amount. I was with the overseer last Last week, and he said to me that every time there is a need in the house, God has put the resources in the pocket of somebody. So I don't know who you are, man, woman, or family. This is how much we need. If God has spoken to you, and you want to be a part of that, see me. And he closed the service. He said, sir, a couple walked up to me after the service and said two months ago we got one money 
Somebody that has been owing us for a very long time. We have even forgotten the money. Say the person paid. And we are about to remove the tithes. And God said, don't touch the money. Keep it. It's for a project. You are going to give the entire 100% to that project. He said, when you hear about it, you will know. So, so when you spoke now, I heard that's the project. My husband turned to me and said, oh, that's the project. He said, so where do we transfer the money? They transferred the money to him. It was 100% of what he wanted. So two months before he had the need, God has put the money in somebody's pocket. One week before, he had to hear the voice of someone that understands God to help him to connect. Many pastors don't have faith. I repeat, many pastors don't have faith. You are a pastor, but you are faithless. And that's why many of you cannot see results. You know the amazing thing? A pastor came to see me one day. And he said that they had the need in their church. And the need that they have was about 150,000 naira. I don't know how much that is in your country. But when he was telling me, we just had a crisis. There was an electronic surge that blew all the screen, the LED. Blew up, everything blew up. We needed about 18 million naira to repair the whole thing. So the guy came to my office. Man of God. Said they needed 150. So I told him, I said, Man of God, I wish I could help you. We also have a need right now of about 18 million. We are just trusting God to put that together. You know what he said? He said, God will do it. <laughs> He's so used to the fake, fake pronunciation that is not rooted in the spirit. He was telling me, No, I'm not God, God will do it. So I looked at him. As a man of God, something is wrong with you. And you people need people to tell you the truth. Because you pastors are so fake and arrogant. Are you sure now you are telling me God will do 18 million? But you don't believe the same God to do 150. I said, Are you seeing the hypocrisy of your statement? So, uh, I said, So, I now say to you, Go. God will do your own. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Number eight. Numero eight. Have a strategic and consistent evangelism and follow up plan. Ayez un plan constant et stratégique d'évangélisation. Have a strategic and consistent evangelism and follow-up plan. Ayez un plan stratégique et consistant d'évangélisation. Like I told you at the beginning, Comme je vous dit dès le there is an entire module, y a un module entier on evangelism Dieu, master plan. Le, le plan so those of you that get the manual, you'll see it there. Vous qui le manuel, But vous I will advise you, Mais je vous conseillerai, en tant que pasteur, parle de plan d'évangélisation, ce que nous disons, vous devez vous asseoir en tant que pasteur.
So like I said at the beginning when we looked at the definition, short planting is the heart of what? So winning. So you have to now sit down. How are we going to win souls? What are the different ways we are going to evangelize? So you come up with a master plan. When you get the manual, there are many things that I cannot explain because of time. So in that master plan, you have to think of what we call the Air Force and the Grand Troop. That means you have to think of the Air Force, Air Force. Things you are going to put in the atmosphere. Because see, when you are on television, you are on radio, you are on social media, that doesn't grow your church. But it publicizes your ministry. So that's Air Force. People will get to know about you. That creates awareness. That publicizes your existence. Then you now need grand troop. The grand troop will now be the door to door evangelism. Your members going to invite other people. Having special programs that will draw people. Having full time staff that will go for evangelism. Having a weekly or a monthly evangelism plan that everybody will go out to win so. Those are the ground troops. So you need to now have all those plans. And when they come, you have to now have a plan on how to follow them up. So you can come up with point one to three or point one to five. What do I mean by one to three or one to five? So you can decide that everybody that comes to our church between Sunday and Sunday we will reach them in three ways. That's point one to three. Or we will reach them in five ways. That's point one to five. So in our church we use point one to five. So between Sunday and the next Sunday we reach you in five ways. That same Sunday before the end of the day you are going to get a text message. Thanks for being a part of our service today. It was a joy having you around. And we hope it was worth your time. We look forward to being a further blessing to you. Tomorrow, you'll be getting an email from our senior pastor. God bless you. So they will get that text the same Sunday. Listen to me. This text message is not sent by an, a human being. No. It's sent by an algorithm. It's sent by a computer system. So once you collect their data, put in their email or their, their phone number, automatically, SMS will drop that day. The next day, email will drop. The email they will get on Monday morning. Dearly beloved of the Lord, Calvary greetings of love, power, and victory to you in Jesus' name. This is your week. We believe you were blessed when you came to be a part of our service Nous yesterday. Vous avez été béni lors de notre culte hier. And we are confident Et nous that as you continue to come, que que vous à venir, your life and destiny votre vie et destiny will never remain the same again. La même. For they go from strength to strength. Car ils vont de force en All those that appear before the Lord in Zion. Ceux qui devant Please à do note vous plaît, notez that we have a covenant with God Nous avons une avec that Dieu. anyone that becomes a part of this house que fait and partie stays consistent and committed Within six months, they will experience a notable miracle. We are available to be of help to you in any way you deem fit. Feel free to follow us on all our social media platforms. For counseling, reach this. If you have prayer requests, send it to this. We look forward to seeing you in our midweek service. In Jesus' name, keep your dream alive. Signed.
They get that one on Monday. Our service is on Wednesday. Midweek service. We are full time staff. That are employed. Their job is intercession and evangelism. They are on salary. And they are there to pray. So when they come on Monday. Two hours. Two hours. After the British pray, they sit down. They review the service. How many souls were saved? How many first timers? Was the text sent yesterday? Have they gotten the email? Which of them wants us to visit them? They process all those ones. On Tuesday, any of the ones that came on Sunday that said they want them to visit them, on Tuesday, they go and visit some people in their office, visit some people in their houses, and they go with a letter. So whether they meet them or not, they will drop letter. Then on Wednesday, they will now call all of them one by one. Hello, how are you doing today? Just want to let you know today is midweek service. We are looking forward to seeing you. Then on Saturday, so before Sunday, they have reached you five times. So, if we put in that effort and we follow you up that five times and we have prayed and one month later you are not in our church you are not our member we are not going to waste energy on you we carry your data put it in the general database you will be getting monthly newsletter an invitation to special program we don't waste energy on what does not belong to us we focus on what belongs to us so that you will not be pursuing the one that is outside and you lose the one you already have hello number nine avoid foundational mistakes there are many mistakes that pastors make that can be easily corrected. But there are some mistakes that pastors make that will follow them for decades. Like I said earlier on, on the 31st of, of October, I'm going to be marking 35 years in full-time ministry. And I'm hosting a two-day conference October 31st and November 1st. Two days. If you want to be a part of it, you can go to my website and go and register. You can join virtually and if you want to travel down to Nigeria, you can travel down Maybe by tomorrow, we'll get the handbill and paste it on the wall so that they can see the picture of everybody that is coming. But I'm releasing a book. It's called Ministers, Mistakes and Ministry. Unveiling common mistakes that ministers make in their life and ministry. So I want to share some foundational mistakes you must avoid. If you are going to plant a church that will grow in this 21st century. Number one. Appointing people into leadership early. It's a foundational mistake. Many times as pastors, because we don't want people to leave, I want to get people committed. You start appointing them into position. You are doing one year anniversary. You are ordaining pastors. One year church. You're ordaining pastor. Somebody you just met nine months ago. And you're ordaining them. You don't know that when you start a church, there are people that come for title. When you start a new church, there are people that say, ah, that church, they will need people. Let me quickly go and position myself. Listen to me. Read your Bible well. He said, they left us. He said they were with us, but they left us that it might be evident that they were never with us. Ah, how can they? Ah, they were with us now. <laughs> then they left us. Ah, 
That there must be evidence. That cannot be evident. That they were never with us. Ah, so when they were with us, they were not with us. <laughs> so there are people that are with you, <laughs> but they are not with you. <laughs> That's Bible. So don't ordain people early. Sometimes test people with time. Do the time test. And even if you want to ordain people, ordain them with things that cannot be trapped. When I started church, we now said after one year, we wanted to ordain Dickens. God said, no, it's too early. So I said, okay. So we started looking for these people. By the second anniversary, we now trade them and we ordain them. In our church constitution then, we have changed our constitution three times now. Our church will be 30 years next year. So we have done constitutional review three times. So as a then, in the church constitution, a deacon was a temporary position. So you, you can be a deacon for two years, renewable for another two years, but you cannot be a deacon for more than four years. So it means that when you are a deacon, you are just like a minister, a servant. Then we expect that you grow from that realm to maybe evangelist to other realms. My people, so I trained these people. I told them, Deacon is temporal. Don't carry the title on your head. Though. So we trained them. The day of ordination, I knew I made a mistake. Our church then was about 200 members. On the day of ordination, we had almost 500 people. Overflow. So I was saying, where are these people? They say, oh, is the, the deacons and deaconesses we are ordinate, ordaining invited all their friends and family. Hey. I already knew there was a problem. Because they have never invited people to church since. Now they want to ordain them. They now know how to gather crowd. How will they now go and tell the crowd four years later that I'm no more a dick, I'm now back to brother? I already knew there was a problem. Then, after service, after the cult, my assistant came to me. Mon assistant est venu à moi. She said, Pastor, where are you going? Où vas-tu? I said, what do you mean, where are you going? Ah, he said, you didn't get invitation. Et pas... I said, invitation for what? Pas invitation. We're ordaining nine people. On, non, on nine Four deaconess, five deacons. He said, and two of them were a couple. To husband and wife. He said he got four invitations for reception in the hall. They are doing reception that they are ordaining you as a deacon. <laughs> so I told him, as a man of God, we have made a mistake. This is an error. That these people that are spending money on reception, you will now tell them later that they are no more addicted. To cut a long story short, by the time the four years expired, only two of them has done well and became a pastor. The remaining seven now went back to brother and sister. Five of them left the church. They could not undo the fact that I used to be deaconess. I am now sister. That's how we cancel deacons. If you come to our church now, I don't have deacons, I don't have deaconess. We don't do that in our ministry. Because a deacon is a servant. A deaconess is a servant. But people have title in their brain. So when I say, if you want to do it, give them a title that cannot be locked down. So what you do is ordain them as minister. Minister John. Minister Jane. 
Because everybody is already a minister. <laughs> so, because, listen. When you ordain somebody as a pastor, like when you ordain somebody as a deacon, they are a deacon in your church, not a deacon to the body of Christ. But when you ordain somebody as a pastor, they become a pastor to the body. So it's not a title you give lightly. A man came to me one day. He said he wants me to be his father. He veut que je sois son père. I said, but you already have a father. He said, sir, that man is fake. He said, I've been with him for 11 years. But I have now discovered he's a fake man of God. So I now ask him a question. Who ordained you? He says, he's the one that ordained me. I said, if a fake man of God ordained you, your ordination is... He said, no, I'm called of God. God can say, mm. you can't say you are called. When a fake man of God is the one that ordained you. Also, the first thing you need to do is go back to the man of God. As a man of God, I want to return the ordination. Because I am called. But I don't want your ordination to mess up my call. So go and return the ordination. Any document they gave you, go and return. You can't say a man is fake and you are carrying a credential of a fake man. As your own validation. So please, I beg you. Don't ordain people. Or give people title. Or appoint people. Prematurely. Number two. Don't be discouraged because of fluctuating members. Don't be discouraged because of fluctuating members. As a pastor, people will come, people will go. Sometimes you come to church, you will see 60 people. Sometimes you show up, they are 34. The day you pray very well, that you fast, that you're expecting the move of God, 5 a.m. it will start raining. That's the day 12 people will now come. You now begin to ask yourself, is it that my prayer is not of God? Have you noticed that every time you fast and pray heavily, that's why you face more trouble. The enemy is setting you up to take you away from the place of prayer so that when you are relaxed, they will now come and finish you. So whether it's one member or one thousand, the same grace, the same fire, the same anointing, you release it upon them because one woman at the well can bring a whole city. So don't allow the members to determine your message. Don't allow the crowd to determine your tempo. That unction that you are releasing is blessing somebody. And in the loins of that person, there are many other people that will be blessed. Number three, avoid huge expenditure. As a young church, avoid huge expenditure. As a young church, when you are starting a church, people have to buy into you before they can buy into your vision. And sometimes it takes four years for you to have people you can call your own that can call you their own. So people go from that church to this church to our church to my church. And that process can take four years. So where do you worship? Oh, that church. Where do you worship? Oh, this church. Where do you watch? Oh, that's our church. Where do you watch? Oh, my church. My church. It takes time for people to get there. 
Same thing for the pastor. That pastor. This pastor. Our pastor. My papa. My pastor. It takes time. So when you are starting a work, don't use money to overdrive people. Don't overdrive people with projects and expenses. Bless them. Let them buy into you first. Let them buy into your vision. Listen to me. When Esau and Jacob met, after many years apart, as they were about to go, Esau said to Jacob, let us go. Jacob said no. You can go. He said you have military men with you. They are trained. They have capacity. He said but I have women and children with me. He said if I go at your pace, I will overdrive them. They will not survive. When you are starting a church, don't overdrive the people. How do you start a church? And you are doing 40 days fasting and prayer. And people must be in church every day. It shows you are jobless. And you want to pastor jobless people. 40 days fasting and prayer. And they have to come every day for 40 days. Are you thinking at all? Are you thinking of the logistics? Are you thinking of the impact on their family? The impact on their health? The impact on their career? You think you are spiritual? It's unwise spirituality. It is zeal without knowledge. You are doing seven days VG. How will they survive when they get to work the next day? They will now go to work and be sleeping in the work. You are affecting the productivity of the nation because you lack understanding. You start a church. Sunday is service. Monday is choir practice. Tuesday is workers training. Wednesday is Bible study. Thursday is prayer meeting. Friday is VG. Saturday is choir practice. Your B board is full from Monday to Sunday. Are you jobless? You want to occupy people every day. When will they not have time to go and do the work? When will they have time to go and practice what you are preaching? They now gather on Sunday again. You do Methuselah service. You start by 8. 2 p.m. you are just booting. The spirit is still moving. Man of God, something is wrong with you. Woman of God, you are in error. If nobody is telling you the truth, yes. That's not the way to do ministry. Except you want to gather children. Kindergarten. Jobless, visionless people. People that matter will not sit in that disorganized place. So from morning to night, you are calling phone number. That's all the grace you have. Oh, my kid, Prophesy, Papa. Go deeper. Your name is John. Yeah! yeah. You are from Yaoundé? Yes, Papa. So you don't know your name? You are so stupid and so daft. You don't know your name? So somebody telling you your name now, that's a revelation. You are from Yaoundé, so you don't know where you came from. You should have told us you are lost. You would have gone to police to report lost and found. That is what we have reduced church to. We have reduced church to shrines. And a garden of jobless, visionless people. Listen to me, if you are a seer, I am an overseer. I will supervise what you are saying to know whether it lines up with the word of God. Listen, oh Africa. 
Prophecies don't fulfill themselves. Les prophéties ne ne se After sont prophecy, you must return to principle. Après la prophétie, tu dois retourner au principe. Read your Bible. Tu n'as pas lu tes Bible. That thou mightest war a good warfare. Que tu dois faire le bon combat. By the prophecy that has gone over your head. Avec la prophétie qui est sortie sur ta vie. Man of God. Homme de Dieu. They prophesy you are going to have a twins. On a prophétisé que tu auras des jumeaux. After the prophecy, there must be sex. Après la prophétie, il y aura un rapport sexuel. If you don't have sex with your wife, s'il n'y a pas de rapport sexuel, the prophecy will never happen. La prophétie ne va jamais se réaliser. Oh, you are going to be a billionaire. Oh, tu seras milliardaire. You don't become rich by prophecy. On ne devient pas riche par la prophétie. After the prophecy, après la prophétie, you must be engaged in productive activity. Tu dois t'engager dans une activité productrice. So, what am I saying? Qu'est-ce que je suis en train de Let's dire? Let's wake up and wise up. Réveillons-nous et soyons sages. And stop all this nonsense. Et arrêtons toute cette connerie. So, number three, huge expenses must be avoided. Des grosses dépenses doivent être évitées. There are some excellence is in levels. L'excellence c'est par niveau. There are some things you cannot afford at a level. Il y a des choses que tu ne peux pas te permettre à un certain. Stay within your grace. Reste dans ta grâce. And grow from et there. Et grandis à partir de là. Number four. Numéro quatre. Mixing personal money and church money is an error. Mélanger l'argent personnel et l'argent de l'église. How can you and your wife be the signatory to the church accounts? Comment est-ce que ton épouse et toi êtes des signataires dans le compte de l'église? You are a fraud that is yet to be discovered. Tu es un fraudeur qui est à découvrir. You are a potential arm robber. Tu es un brigand potentiel. That is still undercover. Qui est encore sous couverture. You and your wife cannot be signing church check. Ton épouse et toi ne pouvez pas signer les chèques. Church money is not your money. Les argent de l'église n'est pas ton argent. It is public funds. C'est les fonds publics. It's not your money. Ce n'est pas votre argent. It's not a family business. Ce n'est pas une affaire familiale. Except you are running Jesus PLC. Excepté que tu gères Jésus PLC. Next. Ensuite. PLC, PLC, like a company, except you are running Jesus Incorporated. Ah, okay. Being the only one counting church offering is a mistake. They collect offering. You put it in a nylon. Put it in your car. And you drive away. You are driving away. You are driving away. You are driving away. Hmm. Another one, let me give you so that we can wrap up because of time. Mistaking good idea for God idea. Good idea is not always God's idea. There are a lot of good ideas that God is not against. Dieu n'est pas contre. But there are some good ideas Mais il y a de bonnes idées that is not of God. qui ne viennent pas de Dieu. So don't copy other people. Alors ne copiez pas les don't autres. Don't compare with other people. Ne vous comparez pas aux autres. Others may be doing it. Les autres pourraient être en train de le faire. Don't try it. N'essayez pas. <laughs> Listen to me. Écoutez-moi. There are some songs. Il y a des chants. That if you want to sing it, que si vous voulez les chanter, only keyboard cannot produce the sound. Seulement le piano ne peut pas produire ce chant. But in your church, mais dans votre église, you have drum, vous avez la batterie, and you have keyboard, et vous avez le piano. And then you want to sing ill song song. Et vous voulez chanter des. That ill song song you want to sing. Les chants que vous voulez faire là. Is eleven instruments. C'est onze instruments. That produce that song. Qui produit ce son là. All you have is just one drum. Tout ce que tu as c'est I want Casio keyboard. Not even chord. <laughs> Casio. You don't know Casio keyboard for ten. Which one do you have? Yamaha Casio. This one is PS. This one is PS. This one is still okay. You know Casio now. You know her. Casio. <laughs> that is Doremi Fatolati. No, 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 no. You now want to sing your song. You will stay on the hill. And the hill, the song will not flow. <laughs> Don't use your pupil to settle personal scores. These are mistakes that pastors make. You come to church on Sunday. Many of you. I know what you are saying about me. But I John. I'm warning you. 
How ah, can you do that as a pastor? Comment peux-tu le faire en tant que pasteur? You come to church. So we are going to pray. On va prier. There are some members of this church that are speaking evil against me and my wife. My God will judge you. Your own member, your own children, God should judge them. If God judge them and they die, where will you be? The glory of the king is in the subject. If you have a throne, you have a crown, you have a rope, you have a staff, you have a signet, and nobody to rule over. Your kingship is useless. So why do you want to kill the truth? <laughs> why will you kill the people? So don't use pupil to set to personal score. You now prepare your own message. And you arrange it so that you can be throwing arrow to all your enemies in the church. No, 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 no. Finally, let me give you one more mistake. Don't use, don't build your ministry on human pillars. Don't build your ministry on human pillars. What do I mean by that? I've seen a lot of pastors make this mistake. God is your source. Don't look up to any man no matter how rich they are. One of the reasons why rich people don't stay in many churches is because the very minute you know that they have money you put them in building committee you put them in uh, this committee you put them in that committee you, every time we need money you are calling them you are, you are just embarrassing them they leave because you can't pastor greatness so you need to understand when you are building a ministry build it on the word of God not on your gifts on the word of God let God be your source when you build your ministry on human beings they can't carry the weight of glory it will become a problem Samson was able to destroy the Philistines and destroy the temple why? The Philistine temple was a 3,000 seat auditorium. But there were only two pillars holding the entire temple. Even though Samson was blind, he looked for a young boy. He said, Take me to the pillar. The boy took him to the pillar. And he pulled down the two pillars. 3,000 seat auditorium came down. When you build your ministry on human pillar, the enemy will go for them. And once the enemy gets them, your ministry is gone. A young man came to me in a minister's conference like this in a capital called Abuja. And he said, Pastor, I would like to see you. He said, I hear that you are starting a church in Abuja. He said, I have a church to sell. I want to sell my church. I said, I don't understand. I said, I want to sell the church. Plus member, plus everything. I want to sell. <laughs> and he showed, me the, he showed me the picture. He was pastoring 100 people. And then two politicians entered the church and started stealing money to give him. And they became his financier. So he laid foundation for a 1,500 seat auditorium and started building. He still had 100 people because he now has money that is bigger than his vision. Now, by the time he got to the decade, the two politicians lost the election. <laughs> And the provision came to an end. So no money to do roofing. No money to complete the building. So when those people were giving him money, he was now feeding people. Using money to increase membership. So members that came by welfare, when the money stopped, the members left. So even the hundred he had before, he now has 30 something people in a 1,500 seater or completed building. 
Un complet de 1500 places. So I want to sell. Il dit je veux vendre. That's what happens. Parce que ce qui se passe. When you build your ministry. Quand tu bâtis ton ministère. On human pillars. Sur des piliers humains. I want to speak at a church in Atlanta. Je veux parler. Je suis allé parler à l'église d'Atlanta. After the service, the pastor came to me. Après le culte, le pasteur vient. And said he wanted us to go to a couple's house to go and have lunch. A voulu qu'on aille chez un couple pour avoir le déjeuner. Am I okay with it? Am I okay with it? Est-ce que ça va avec moi? So I said, my brother, dit, mon frère, I am your guest. Je suis ton invité. Wherever you say I should go, Partout, tu dis que je, I will go. But if I can advise you, I am a man of God. Tu es un homme de Dieu. The only reason why I'm here is because we have a relationship. I'm supposed to be like a father to you if I want to follow that kind of realm. So for you to carry a whole grace like me, to go to one couple's house to go and eat. Is there no more restaurants in Atlanta? That when you are giving members those kind of privileges, you are going to create problems. You so know, these people are very special. He said something that I knew was a problem. He said they are tight alone. <laughs> pays the church mortgage, pays my salary, and still give us extra. At that point, I looked him in the eye. I said, my brother, you are in error. Oh, I said, the reason why we are going is because of their money. I said, so those are your finances. I said, they are the pillars. I said, error. So I said, I'm sorry. But he said, no, we have already, already prepared. So we went. We got that lovely couple. Lovely couple. They took care of us, gave us food, explained different things. We had a nice time. When I was going, they packaged the envelope for me. Give me offering. So it's not that the people are bad. It's the pastor that is in error. Not the people. The people are just doing their work. So I left. Two years later, I was back in the city. We have been staying in touch. So he told me he wanted to come to the church. I told him I'm not coming. Because I don't do puppet relationship. So I knew that I needed to work on him. To continue to relate with him in that level. But the two years later, the church has died. What happened? He traveled to go and start another branch and left the church for his wife. So he went for one month, came back for one week and left for two months. Within the time he left, the wife started a weekly prayer meeting. Power began to flow. Church was growing. The wife began to adjust things. The guy got angry that his wife was doing well. It became competition between husband and wife. And what the wife had done was to use the power of women to help the church. So the guy comes back three months later and stood on the pulpit and said, I've been away for a while. You are not even calling me. You are not even checking on me. I'm still the pastor of this church. You see, when a man is telling the wife, I'm the head of this house, if you have to be introducing yourself to your wife, you have lost the edge. To cut a long story short, everything the wife set up, the guys cancel it on the other. And the couple walked up to the wife. And said, Mama, what's happening between you and Papa? The man said, Why will he cancel everything we have been doing? We have been laboring. The church is growing since he has been away. Why will he do this? So they walked up to him. And they said, Papa, what you did today is wrong. You have to reinstate everything that Mama has done. Why will you say, Are you the one to tell me what to do? Who do you think you are? That's how they left church. So the pillar left. <laughs> and they are tight and offering left. 
the next month, the month suivant, they couldn't pay bill. In less than eight months, church was closed down. Et mois plus tard, because one fermée. couple, one couple Parce left. Un seul couple est allé. So who is your source, man of God? Alors, qui est votre source, homme de who Dieu? are your pillars? Qui sont vos piliers? Because that's the same mistake that many of us are making. Parce que la, la même que nous Number 10. Numéro 10. Put vital systems and structures in place. Mettez en place des systèmes vital. From the beginning. Vito. Dès le commencement. Put vital systems and structures in place. En place des systèmes vitaux dès le commencement. From the beginning. Dès le commencement. I have two minutes more. J'ai encore deux minutes. So let me just explain. Let me just list them. Alors que je les cite. Then you go and get the manual. Et vous allez obtenir le manuel. And then we can continue with other things tomorrow. Et on va continuer avec d'autres choses demain. You must have a leadership policy in place from day one. Vous devez avoir une politique de leadership dès le premier jour. How will people become leaders in your ministry? Comment est-ce que les gens deviennent leaders dans votre ministère? You must have a training policy in place from day one. Vous devez avoir une, un programme de formation dès le premier jour. How will People be trained in your ministry. You must have an administrative policy in place. How will you run the administration of the church? You must have a financial policy in place. How will the finance of the church be managed? You must have a recruitment policy in place. How will you recruit people into the work? You must have a discipline policy in place. How will you discipline people when they err? These are few things I feel I can do today. We are going to go on a 10-15 minutes break now. The purpose of the break is threefold. Number one, so that you can go and ease yourself and refresh. Number two, so that you can network with other people that are here. And most importantly, so that you can go and get the materials. So like I said, everything we are doing, the morning session is from here. This one is for the evening session. So all pastors go and get a copy of this. I am seeing a lot of people here. I think we have only 50 copies. Right? So if you don't rush, it will finish. Because we are more than 50 years. So it's only 50 copies available. And then if you want the certificate, you now register and pay or make a deposit. So the manual is 10,000. The certificate is 10,000. It's optional. But if you are buying the two, you pay 15,000 for the package. The pathway to wealth is here. The school of money book is here. How to create wealth as a career person is here. And then, for those of you that want to go into marriage ministry, singles ministry, or you want to build your marriage, Wisdom for Couples Park is here. It has 10 books and 10 audio. Wisdom for Singles Park is here. 10 books and 10 audio. Then this is the World Creation Master Park. Everything I have written on World Creation, including all these books, they are here. And all the audio programs are also here. So when you get this, you have everything I've done on World Creation. And then we have the Real Estate Park. This Real Estate Park comes with a manual and it comes with one year mentorship. Those who attended this conference last year paid $10,000. Three of them are here, they paid $10,000 last year for one week. So get all the materials. It will be a blessing to you. So we're going on break now. It's 12.02 from my time. 
By 12.15, I'll be back je serai de retour, and then we'll spend 45 minutes et on va passer 45 to minutes do questions and answers. Questions et réponses. So if you have any question, si vous avez des questions, we'll now take it from there. On va prendre la if there is no question, si y a pas de question, I will continue from where I stopped. Je vais continuer de là où But je this viens. meeting ends by one. Et cette réunion à so 13 on the heures. dot of one, we are out of here. À 13 heures, 0, 0, and then we expect six. all of you back in the evening et on tout le monde de le soir. for the school of money. Pour God bless you. I'll see you in 12 minutes. Je vous vois dans 12 minutes.